heavily on anomalous. And you saw my son, Andrew, last night. He, he's actually the owner of Anomalous. Uh, Andrew's a brilliant software engineer. Uh, this, this kid's way out there. And it was interesting when we were working on the project, I could come in and say, uh, you know, we, we need to show this or, or be able to illustrate that. And he'd jump in his rabbit hole, and, which literally was an office that was dark. And it was Andrew's domain, and, and he popped back out two or three days later, and there it was. And then Chase, you guys met Chase at the study groups. You know, Chase is, is a brilliant artist. And I remember the day I interviewed Chase, he comes in, you know, he's kind of tall and lanky, and he's got his, his shirt buttoned all the way up here, and I'm thinking, that's kind of odd that this young guy's coming in with his shirt buttoned all the way up there. So I hired him, and uh, he was thrilled. It was his first art job out of art school. And uh, so the button came down, and here's this tattoo. <laughs> and, but the tattoo was perfect anatomy from the hyoid bone all the way down his chest wall. And so I said, why didn't you show me that when you interviewed? It would have been a feather in your cap. I can see, you know, I can see how focused you are in your artwork. But at any rate, uh, Chase, Chase has become almost like a son to me, and, and he was a big part of development, as was, was Greg back here, too. So it was kind of neat. I knew nothing about software and stuff like that, but I could kind of walk in and sense the energy that all these guys had. <coughs> and things really developed very nicely. So the project ended a few years ago, uh, but what's interesting <coughs> is because it's a medical model, we can go back and look <coughs> in, from a different perspective. Okay, so it's not like a it's not like a cartoon where you've got one set perspective. It's it's a medical model that can be looked at a number of different ways because we've got all these objects built into it. <clears throat> now this is now open source software and what that means is it can be it can be added to by other developers if they want. I don't think there's been much action on that front, but it is open uh, to be able to do that. And you can get it for free now. Um, so it's open, it's free. We, we don't harvest data. We should, but we don't. Uh, so uh, at any rate, this is, this is how it falls out. I'm going to rely on Anomalous very, very heavily in the airway lecture because that's what taught me joint based concepts. So I think it applies to the airway uh, with some of the work that we did on it. <clears throat> so keep in mind, this is medical modeling software. It is not a cartoon. And it's really a mathematical framework, which you see here on the right. And all of these objects have been built mathematically. Okay, and that's kind of what Andrew did and Chase did. Andrew would program um, some way for Chase to develop the framework on the right, and then Chase would skin it. Skinning simply means you, you make the object look like it should. So the tongue is a separate object <clears throat> and has a mathematical model all by itself, but then it's skinned to look like a tongue. Ditto every muscle, every nerve, every vessel, uh, the skin itself, uh, and so on and so forth. We built the whole skeleton. I, I, I bought a skeleton and uh, bought it on, on eBay, I think, and it came in. And I, I opened up the box, and the, the bones were dirty. And I looked at it, and it came from China. So I made him take it back. and. Uh, eventually found a, a clean um, skeleton that I think had belonged to a chiropractor. So, but I mean, it, it almost sickened me to see this box, and it was from China. And so there was somebody that probably, you know, did what you could imagine. So, at any rate, everything is its own object. E each tooth is a separate mathematical model. We built the gingiva 
the maxilla and mandible, we can add that and take it away. Each muscle is also a separate mathematical model. And so I think a lot of times as I presented this to you guys, I would just show you what was on the left. But there's a lot of data uh, that is in the model itself that is kind of spelled out by what you're seeing here on the right. So because it's a mathematical model, um, you can manipulate math. You can manipulate in space and do different things. And so one of the, one of the key things we can do is point-to-point -point measurements. And we've programmed certain things in. We could program much more. Uh, but basically, we've programmed things in like Ramus height, uh, and that would be in this top category right here where we're looking um, right here. And then we've got the occlusion. And the occlusion I based on the tympanic fissure. Now that goes way back. The tympanic fissure is a repeatable measurement point on the skull. So the tympanic fissure separates the TM joint fossa from the ear, and there's a bony wall that then eventually becomes a cartilaginous wall more laterally, okay? So the measurement point should be the lateral part of the bony part of the fissure. That's, that's a point that can be replicated as you're looking at things. And to measure the occlusion, uh, basically, I took a measurement uh, to the first molars, the mesial contact point of the first molars. And so this would be the distance, uh, say, to the maxillary first molar from the fissure. This is going to be um, the measurement to the mandibular first molar. Okay, and you can see they're going to be about five millimeters longer. And then we also programmed in uh, looking at open bites at the incisors. Um, and then we've got volumes down here. I'll talk a lot about the volume of the airway and kind of define that for you as we go through the modeling. So we can do these measurements. Uh, but another key thing about the software is that we can make it dynamic. So we can actually make the objects move, in particular the mandible, okay? And as the mandible is moving, we can, we can real-time track uh, exactly, you know, exactly how these numbers here will change uh, as we do that. And uh, then we can do volume calculations. And the volume that we defined here is, is the oral pharyngeal cavity. And I'll give you the outline of that here in a little bit. So here in the model, I've protruded it a few millimeters. And the oral pharyngeal volume has gone up from 100% to about 110%, OK? We don't have to go that far in the real world. In the real world, if you look at uh, what a little bit of protrusion will, will do, you'll see that it can make a significant change uh, in your airway dimension. And we will talk about that. And then you can program this uh, so the model can be programmed uh, to do movements. So there's actually in the background a timeline uh, where we can lay down all these different things. Uh, we can zoom in and out. We can pan it. Just imagine developing a movie, okay? As we're developing the movie, we can change the angulation where you're looking at this model. Uh, we can zoom in and out as you go through the, through the timeline. And we can also add and remove objects, add and remove movements, and so forth. So they're like six different lines. And we're just adding or subtracting things in those lines. We built objects. And you've seen some of the things in the novelist where I've got a finger that can point. Okay, so we built the finger, and, and we can bring that into the model and point. We can do arrows and things like that. So there's a lot of stuff in Anomalous that, that you guys aren't even aware of because you're looking at the images. Uh, but from a development standpoint, there's a whole lot more there uh, that's in the background of information. So this is, this is illustration of the modeling. And uh, if you watch uh, this area right here, you'll see the percentages. What's interesting is opening the mandible vertically 
decreases the airway dimension, right? And so that hinge opening, as you watch on the highest hinge opening, that's dropping down to 92% airway. We don't hinge open our jaws, okay? We have to have a protrusive movement to keep our airway open, okay? And the model shows us that. Uh, this isn't something that I, I made the model do to prove a certain thing. All I did was program the movement and I looked at the information that the model gave me as, and as I was going back through the material preparing for the Dawson uh, seminar, I realized, wow, we've, we've got tremendous value in, in what joint-based concepts can show us and uh, what we can see then as a result in the airway. And so you're gonna see a lot of anomalous uh, during the lecture, and I wanna point this out to you. We're not trying to prove anything with medical modeling. Uh, it's a discovery process, and, and Anomalous has taught me a lot. It's been kind of neat uh, to be able to look from a different perspective. The anatomy is there, and surgically, I've never looked from the medial pole into the TM joint on, on a live patient. I have on cadavers, but that's been rare. And you don't see what you see in Anomalous. And so, Anomalous allows us to discover, okay? And it also helps explain better what we think we know, okay?